Hey, welcome back to Hemlock Ridge. Glad you could join me. It's a cold day at the cabin today. Um, not terribly cold, about 30 degrees outside, just below freezing, and I've been doing some work outside. It's really nice coming up here in the snow and in the winter because if you need to trim and uh, weed out some thin trees and stuff like that, it's really easy to do it when there's nothing but snow on the ground. So that's what I've been doing, clearing out some brush and uh, some fallen trees and things like that. Came in, made a little stew, gonna warm up, have a little meal, and then what I'd like to do today is actually show you the new outhouse that we've put in here on the property. So it's a completely self-contained outhouse and I wanted it that way so I didn't have to be dealing with uh, smell and other issues and digging a hole and stuff like that. So uh, if you've been thinking about having an off-grid camp, uh, need something for your property, I'll show you what I did and it's uh, so far working out pretty good. So uh, glad you could join us up here today on Hemlock Ridge. And uh, just going to finish this up and we'll head outside and show you what that's all about. So I'm going to take you over. We'll show you the, uh, the new off-grid outhouse over here. Um, actually, I put it probably, I don't know, uh, 100, 200 feet away from the cabin. And I uh, just wanted to put it in a central location. We sometimes camp out in a field over here. So this was uh, a little bit farther away. So uh, let's go take a look at it over here. So it's just down the path. Uh, nice little walk over here, not too far away. Just going to take a little walk through the woods over here. And I've got it set up uh, right down here by a little bit of a field we use for, uh, for picnics and camping and stuff like that. So here she is, uh, board and batten, four foot wide by six foot long. Uh, got a metal roof on it and you can see just a little bit down the path from the cabin back there in the distance. Uh, so just a little bit of a walk, uh, not too bad. Um, really uh, like this, this is a rough cut Amish lumber. Um, I think they did plane it a little bit, so it's uh, a little bit smoother than what you might normally get. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you what's inside here. So one of the things I did do is I wired it up for solar and you can see I put a little little light switch in here and have a little bit of light. Um, you really need the light because there's no windows in here. That's going to be one of the projects I've got when the weather warms up a little bit. It's going to cut a window in the back here so you get some light and some ventilation. But uh, not too bad. I insulated the ceiling and I've got a little heater that I could start up there. A little a catalytic heater just to take the chill off inside there in the in the cold winter months. Painted the floor. You can see you've got a sink, you've got a toilet, and a few shelves and things like that. Now, um, I'll start out with the sink and show you what we got here. So, uh, we are totally off grid here. So this sink is got a reservoir in the bottom. It holds about five gallons of water with a foot pump, and this is really nice because uh, you can fill that up. It lasts a really long time and then be able to wash your hands and uh, things of that nature. Um, moving along, I just built this mirror really cheaply. Just got a piece of mirror from the hobby store and uh, picked up some uh, yellow birch branches here, just kind of cut them into a frame, and we've got our mirror. Uh, for the light, I did something a little bit different. I actually found online an LED bulb uh, that is 12 volts. So it's actually a 12 volt system, so I didn't need an inverter. And that's nice because you don't have any of that uh, uh, loss when you get uh, converted from 12 volt to 120 volt um, and so I'm able to just run right off of solar and a battery and run a, a 12 volt LED on there. I'm just running a little motorcycle battery in here right now. I'll show you the solar setup in a second. Probably going to need to get something with more capacity but um, this draws so little and because it's the winter I'm not really running the fan inside of the composting toilet. So the toilet, this is a nature's head composting toilet. And I wanted to go with this for ease of insulation. Didn't want a big uh, 
pit have to be dug and dealing with odors and all that kind of stuff. And so this is completely self-contained. Uh, this is a diverting toilet, which is how most of these composting toilets work. So what it does is it actually diverts number one from number two. So number one goes in the front, number two goes in the back. There's a trap door here if you're going to be doing that, which opens up down below. And uh, it works really, really well. So this is the number one bottle. Uh, and then uh, below, this kind of sits on a composting tank. And you can see right here, there is a spider handle. And you can move this to compost uh, or move the compost around in there inside of the chamber. So uh, what it uses is sphagnum peat moss. And that's all it uses. You put that in there. And it's actually uh, good for, the manufacturer says, 60 uses. So that's a lot. Um, I have not, we have not used it that much yet, candidly. We'll see how it does in the warmer weather. Right now when it's this cold, there's no composting happening. It has to be about 55 degrees for the composting to happen. And that's why you have this uh, vent fan here. So there's a very low voltage uh, fan that just keeps a little bit of negative pressure on this to make sure there's no odor, but also to keep air moving through here to help aid in the composting. And so that will work in the summer, and it just vents outside, and uh, again, they say about 60 uses before you have to empty it, which is really, really nice. So uh, really happy with it, though. Really high quality. Um, you know, made in the USA. They are back-ordered because I think there's a lot of folks that are ordering these things right now, so if you're going to order one, took me about eight weeks to get it from the manufacturer. Uh, but you can see here, I've got my solar controller right here. Got about 12.7 uh, volts in there right now. And it is charging even on this cloudy day. And that is what runs uh, and charges the battery for the lights. And then I can actually use this little on off switch here to turn on or off the 12 volt vent fan for the composting toilet. So uh, really works good, it's just simple, and uh, works out really, really good. So we'll tell you how that works in the summer. This too I thought you might like. This is a toilet paper holder I built. Uh, just really simple, made out of two by six, or I should say one by six. And it is uh, got another container up there for storage. And then your roll goes down there. And you can just buy the actual spring-loaded uh, toilet paper uh, roll at any of your uh, home good or home goods at any of your home improvement stores, and uh, just thought that added a, a neat little touch to the cabin here or to the to the outhouse. So there you have it, guys. Four by six outhouse, off grid, completely self-contained. Got a little bit of heat in here. Got a door. Got a coat hook. And uh, what else could you ask for? So here's the solar panel I'm using right now. Um, I got this thing off of the internet. I think it's direct from China. It, uh, they say it's 100 watt. I don't think it's 100 watt. It's probably 50 watt, but for this, it, it works good. It's just one of these flexible solar panels. I just built a little stand out of some scrap lumber I had um, laying around, put it in there, and it, it works great. That's really all you need to charge a battery for something like this. That's just gonna be you know, an LED light and a really low voltage uh, fan as well too. Uh, so there you have it, there's the back of the outhouse and uh, hoping this will hold up really well for us in the long run. So I'm gonna go back to what I was doing. I got some more work here, just trimming up some fallen trees and getting rid of some prickers and things of that nature. But uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna do a video in the next couple weeks here, show you how I hooked up the solar in our cabin in case you're looking to add uh, solar for any off-grid buildings on your property and uh, until next time we'll see you back up here on Hemlock Ridge. Mm -hmm.